Hey, once again, ladies and gentlemen, you already know who it is. It is your boy, Lewis, and welcome back to my channel on the Lewis Basketball Network. I am back with another one with another video. I just want to talk about last night's game really quick. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a great game. The Toronto Raptors and the Milwaukee Bucks. This has been a very highly contested close series. These Eastern Conference Finals have been lit. No question about it. Now, the Raptors come on the road. They win 105-99. You know, they beat Milwaukee, and um, hey, man, Kawhi Leonard, man, 35 points, 15 points in the fourth quarter, 15 big points in the fourth quarter. You know what's so crazy? Kawhi had a great performance, and you're already going to hear Skip. Oh, that number two guy up in Toronto? Yeah. You know what he did? Yeah. That Kawhi Leonard? Oh, he hit two of the luckiest step-back shots in NBA playoff history. And he missed the free throw in the fourth quarter. But he's supposed to be this great player, right? The two luckiest step backs? Yeah, don't give me that injury excuse. He is not injured. He is making up excuses. Told you Skip is on that culture salt, man, because he is salty. That Kawhi Leonard is not playing for his Spurs, and he felt like the Spurs would be a threat to go to the NBA Finals and beat the Warriors, right? So, but ladies and gentlemen, the game ball goes to Fred Van Vliet. Off the bench, he could... He, he brings his game four play from Toronto from the six, brings it to the Brewer City in Milwaukee, and gives you 21 points off the bench. If I would have told you that the Milwaukee Bucks had five guys in double figures, if I would have told you that they out-rebounded Toronto 53 to 45, if I would have told you that the Bucks won the paint battle 44 to 24, you would have said to yourself, man, I think the Bucks would have beaten the Toronto Raptors. And also, the Bucks got off to an 18 to four lead. But see, that was the start of the game in the first quarter, and we know that it's a 48-minute game, and it's not just how you start, it's how you finish. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, Fred Van Vliet, man, gets the game ball for his stellar performance. Um, Marcus only had six points and four rebounds. Kyle Lowry had 17 points and uh, seven rebounds, I believe. Um, Pascal Siakam had 14 points and 13 rebounds. Um, you know, just a great performance. Now for the Bucks, Giannis Antetokounmpo had 24 points, six rebounds, six assists in 39 minutes. Uh, but the Raptors did a good job defensively against um, Giannis, and they made it really tough for him. Anytime he drove to the basket, there was said two, three guys. They would trap him really hard. They were physical with him. But at the same time, there were many occasions where he would get fouled and the referees couldn't be able to see it because of how fast the game action was going. So I thought Giannis should have gotten to the free throw line, but the referees weren't seeing it and they weren't calling it. So there was some obvious calls that they kind of let go that were clear-cut fouls on both ends, but more so for Giannis in terms of going to the free throw line, for sure. He did get fouled a lot. But what this series is showing, though, is how limited offensively Giannis Antetokounmpo is. Most likely, he is my 2019 MVP, but he's very limited offensively. And that's why I was saying that, that as much as he's most likely like the MVP this season, uh, the Raptors just did a good job of defending him and they would just continue to send guys at him. Um, and it was very difficult, even though Giannis is obviously willing to make the pass. But ladies and gentlemen, Chris Middleton, six points in 36 minutes of action. Yeah, he had 10 rebounds, 10 assists, but there were many times where it looked like he was afraid to shoot the ball. Um, Eric Bledsoe had 20 points in 34 minutes. Mike Budenholzer is going to kick himself in the leg for not inserting Bledsoe at a key time in the game where he had him sitting a little too long when the Raptors were making their run. Um, Brooke Lopez had 16 points and 8 rebounds. I felt like they could have involved him a little bit more in the offense. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon gave you 18 points, 11 rebounds, and 6 assists. But one mistake that I felt like Budenholzer also made was putting Brogdon into the starting lineup because they really didn't have a lot of bench depth after that. And George Hill had 12 points and eight rebounds off the bench. The Raptors bench outscored the Bucks bench 32 to 15. Van Vliet scoring 21 of the 32, obviously. But having Brogdon start uh, really kind of hurt their bench, so there was really no more production. Um, also, the Toronto Raptors got to the free throw line, I believe, eight, 13 more times than the um, Bucks did. So they got 13 more free throw attempts. Uh, the Bucks turned the ball over 11 times, which is not a lot, but the Raptors only had six turnovers as a team. And the Raptors, won the, th they won the three-point battle. They were 18 of 41, which is, at the, or no, 18 of 43, I believe, which is 41.9%, uh, while the Bucks were only 10 of 30-something, I believe, and that was like 32%.
no, 10 of 31, with, and only 32%. So the Raptors were plus 24 from the three-point line. Um, so those, that was, that, those were key. And uh, it hurts Milwaukee for them to start out 18 to four and losing the way they did. And uh, they kind of choked in the fourth quarter, especially with that turnover uh, with Brogdon when they went off the foot when Siakam was guarding him. So, I mean, that was huge. But um, in order for the Bucks to win game six, Bruden Hoser, and another thing that I didn't like from the Bucks that I saw last night, they stopped moving the ball in the second half. And they were playing a lot of one-on-one, something they had not been used to doing. And it was feeding it to, it was making it easier for the Raptors to defend them when, uh, when the Bucks would go one-on-one. So uh, I need, if they're going to win on the road, they're going to have to share the ball. And what's crazy is they had more assists than Toronto, 25 to 19 for the game. But you wouldn't be able to see that, right? Stats will tell you the Bucks were moving the ball. But if you watch the game, especially in the fourth quarter, they were going a lot of one-on-one. The Raptors did a better job of swinging the ball. And listen, you know, Kawhi Leonard hits two amazing step back three threes. Like he, like Ka- Kawhi's, yo, know, he's come out that Kobe 101 and just come out and just, I think Kawhi Leonard upgraded to Kobe 202 with the way this brother's playing. And it won't be long until he's, he's in Kobe 303. So it's like, I already see it, man. Like, yo, know, he's just upgraded his game. This is Kawhi's seventh 35 point game, point performance in the playoffs. Seven games of at least 35 or more. Yo, he's having an unbelievable playoffs. And I think if KD had not been there, we'd be going neck and neck between KD and Kawhi as who is the best player. I still think it's Kevin Durant, me personally, but I think Kawhi just put himself at that number two spot right there. And this is why Giannis Antetokounmpo, if he can get a jump shot, he can put himself in that conversation. No, he's definitely there, don't get me wrong, but what I'm saying is like an elite, elite. He's very limited offensively. It's like... If you look at Kawhi and you look at Kevin Durant, both of them are much more skilled than Giannis is in terms of offensively. Offensively. And Giannis did make the defensive uh, first team all defense, as I mentioned. Kawhi was second team. Uh, It's crazy how Kawhi is showing a really more complete game uh, these playoffs. And he said it in the press conference, man, I'm not afraid of the moment. Nick Nurse told me to go get it. Great adjustment by Nick Nurse um, in terms of guarding Kawhi, uh, Giannis. You see all eyes are geared toward Giannis at Tenacumpo. As much as he's willing to make the extra pass, yeah, he made like two threes in the game, but it's like if you're the Raptors, you're willing to let him take those shots because he can't shoot from the outside. See, that's the game plan with a great player that only attacks the rim. Make him beat you from the outside. And they were trying it, and it just – and also, like I said, he was breaking free throws like he was Shaq out there, man. So it's just like – but uh, I love Giannis's confidence after the game. He said, yo, how are you going to ask me if we're, if we're going to fold, man? Like, yeah, that's just ridiculous. We're going to get everything we got. You know, if we lose, we happen to lose. Um, he said, but we, we're not going to fold. Uh, listen, we were, the, we had, we were, we're the, best, we're the best team in the league. Now, what I will say about that is I appreciate the confidence, but best team remains to be seen. You were the best team all year, record-wise. But, um, and then people were saying that the Buck series was over after two games. Um, I was one of those. Uh, well, I said that the I said the Raptors were. I, I didn't say the Raptors were going to get swept. I didn't even think the Raptors were going to lose in five. They could have probably lost in five if it wasn't for that game three where Giannis fouled out. And this series, think about it. There have been two blowouts, three close games. The Raptors had a double digit lead in game one. Bucks come back and win off the stellar impact that Eric Bledsoe have. And his three for twelve wouldn't tell you that when he scored nine points. Also, the Bucks had a double digit lead in this game. And the Raptors came back and won it. That's why I'm telling you, the series could have, has, could have gone either way, to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. But the Bucks showed inexperience in the fourth quarter, and Brudenholzer made a very big coaching mistake. Uh, and he should have emphasized ball movement, which the Bucks were not doing in the fourth quarter. They were going too much one-on-one and then just starting to just shoot threes. Late in the game is when they wanted to attack the basket. But they need to move the ball. The Raptors did a better job of moving the ball, even though the assist totals wouldn't tell you that because the Bucks had six more assists than the Raptors did, 25-19. So that's what I'm trying to tell y'all, ladies and gentlemen. It's like everything has contacts. Stats tell the truth, but they don't tell you everything, not the whole story. That's what I be telling y'all, ladies and gentlemen. It is what it is, man. But this is like what I'm saying, man. I honestly think the Bucks are gonna have to, they're gonna bring their, they're gonna bring their A game, they're gonna have to bring their A game in A game six. And if you're the Toronto Raptors, think about this. This is the first time that you've ever been in this kind of position. Think about it. 
you have a chance to go to the NBA Finals. It was so crazy that Drake started trolling the the Milwaukee owner, the Bucks, the Milwaukee Bucks owner's daughter. Like, <laughs> this dude is all over the place, man. Yo, Drake and his antics. Watch Drake come out with a rap freestyle after Toronto wins game six. Or even if the Raptors lose the series in seven, he'll still come out with a track regardless. Um, but the Raptors are in, uh, they're in great position. Um, the series is not over. It's the first team to four. The Bucks have a chance to make history, go on the road and win in game six and come back and bring it to Milwaukee. If you're the Raptors, you don't want to go back to Milwaukee because it's most likely that they're not going to win. Do you have a chance? Yeah, they do. Um, but once again, like you have to understand, if you're the Raptors, this is your game seven. Besides, with the amount of minutes that Kawhi Leonard's playing and how hobbled he is right now, even though Skip keeps making up, making up crap thinking that Kawhi's not hurt, listen, you have a chance to get at least four to five days of rest if you win on Saturday. This is huge. You lose Saturday, you have to play on Monday. That's a minus two days of rest. And, and the Warriors are going to be fully rested, despite that they're not going to have KD and Giannis and, um, and Boogie at the start of the finals. So you got to think about that. If you're the Raptors, you need to put it all out there and eliminate the Bucks now. Try to be the one of the teams in NBA history to come back from an 0-2 deficit to win the series in Toronto. And finally, people can say we, the North, are in the NBA Finals. And just think, Kawhi Leonard, what you would have done in one year that many Raptors could have not done in their careers, but that's not their fault because it's because of the way the teams were constructed and different time periods and, you know, teams that they were going up against. But the bottom line is, Kawhi Leonard has done more in one year in Toronto than people probably could have argued for. And the Raptors look more legit because of number two in the North, in the six, that got Drake all hype. Now, Drake needs to troll and he needs to chill. He needs to stop his trolling and let the Raptors do their thing. And hopefully they could get it done and win game six because I, I really, it's crazy. But when I looked at the Bucks, I'm like, both teams give the Warriors problems on the defensive end. But I feel like the Raptors would be more consistent and more physical on the defensive end to the Warriors than the Milwaukee Bucks. And I think it's because you got to look at it this way, guys, too. Um, Kawhi Leonard is a former finals MVP and he won a championship and he led a team to the Western Conference Finals without Tim Duncan. Um, you know, when he retired, even with LaMarcus Aldridge, Tony Parker coming off the bench and he wasn't the same player he was in Mono Ginobili coming off the bench or Tony Parker was starting in 2017. I don't remember. But he's led a team to the Western Conference Finals. Um, Kyle, uh, Kyle Lowry's been to the Eastern Conference Finals. Marcus Saul went to the Western Conference Finals in 2013. So Danny Green, former champ, yo, he's a champion. 2014 with the Spurs. I mean, so they have experience. And also went to the Western Conference Finals. So they have experience on their side, believe it or not. So um, more than the Bucks have. So this is really the first time that the Bucks have gone this deep. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, man, if the Raptors get it done, this is it's gonna be a celebration like no other, man. And you get to and think about this. You win in game six, you get to host the NBA finals. Because the Golden State Warriors, they do not have home court advantage if either the Bucks win or the Raptors win. Because the Raptors have 58 wins, and remember the Golden State have 57. So this is going to be the first time in their championship run that the Warriors are trying to do with their fifth straight finals appearance that they're not gonna have home court advantage. So if I'm the Raptors, this is my game seven. You need, you need to bring it. And like Kawhi Leonard said, Nick Nurse told him, go get it. Kawhi Leonard, Kyle Lowry, Pascal Siakam, Serge Ibaka, Marcus Saul, even Danny Green, Fred Van Vliet, Norman Powell. Go get it, guys. Get it done. Make your Raptor fans proud. Extend the season. And then Kawhi will probably, and, and think about this, guys. Kawhi Leonard will have an opportunity to try to redeem himself after being injured two years ago at the hands of Zaza Pachulia, even though there's no Zaza there now. So think about that. That would make a crazy storyline, wouldn't it? I'm just saying, because the NBA is about storylines. And the Toronto Raptors, to me, match up with the Warriors very well. 
But anywho, this is your boy Lewis, man, back with another video, man. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, man. As always, what you think about Game 5 and what do the Bucks need to do for Game 6 and what do the Raptors need to do for Game 6 in order for both teams to win? Do you think the Raptors close it out on Saturday or do you think the Bucks bring it back to Milwaukee Monday night and close it out there and the Bucks win in 7? Or do you think the Raptors will win in 7 even if they lose Game 6? So let me know what you think. As always, bless up. One love. Peace. Thanks for